Hello everyone and welcome back to another Poke Poke Devlog. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, a very early, very work in progress look at um, the latest kind of uh, hub world, hub area of the game to be completed, um, or at least kind of in a like first full complete like draft, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> stage. Obviously like the background art and so on is not finished and we've got some little notes from Ink Splat around the place just um, for himself for like working out exactly how he's gonna like draw and detail the background and stuff like that, just some test parallax things. But the like the general level layout and so on and the puzzles and things like that um, are, uh, are, are a bit more complete. Um, so I've been talking about this in the um, like the video I did on the world design and so on. This is the longest like linear path, um, linear section of the game, kind of where you're forced to do a bunch of kind of hard stuff in sequence um, uh, in the world um, with l less kind of options for kind of like branching out and doing like other optional stuff unless you were to backtrack to kind of the valley and other areas uh, in order to actually make progress in sort of the story of the game. You've got to climb this uh, really really big mountain. There's not really anything, any any other way uh, to do that. Um, so it's interesting, uh, the mountainside. It's posed a lot of interesting problems that I've yet to really solve. I'm just going to give you a quick glance of it in Game Maker so you can get an idea for the scale of it. So you see this little area I just did here. I climbed up, but if I zoom out, uh, the, the, it's pretty tall. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty tall room. I don't remember, I don't have the inspector up here. There's a room in it. Where, where, where's my inspector? Um, I just I just wanted to show how how tall it was. Uh, Twelve thousand pixels tall. Um, actually, I thought it was bigger than that. Eh, there you go. Don't know my own game very well, but yeah, twelve thousand uh, eight hundred pixels tall. Um, and one of the interesting things about designing this area is um, the prospect of going up is obviously like you know like that would seem to be a very staple concept of the game. It's all about climbing and uh, you know using the spear to like reach places. Uh, what's a place humans can't really reach by themselves? Well, due to gravity, uh, the upwards direction um, tends to be uh, a bit of a sticking point. Um, so yeah, um, like you would think going up would be like the, the most like staple kind of like thing we could do in this game, but it actually poses a lot of interesting problems uh, for level design. Um, most notably the problem of falling. Um, I think that's pretty good. Okay, no, we've got some spikes there. Um, but like uh, there's a few areas, maybe here's like one, eh, it's quite hard to do that now, yeah, because I've been working at it for a while. Um, so the way the uh, respawn system works in the game, don't know if I've talked much about this before, but like you see in this little debug mode, there's a little X on the player there, and when they're airborne, um, the X stops moving, that, that X is their respawn position, so like they'll go back to wherever they were last safely stood on the ground. Um, I can also define zones uh, that are considered unsafe, um, that will not create respawns in them, if maybe like you can get stuck between something, if you like fluke a jump and you know it would be really difficult to get back or something like that, I can mark areas as being kind of unsafe, uh, but generally speaking uh, it holds your last uh, position. There's also checkpoints I can put in, so if for example you manage to bounce your way up and kind of like um, you know avoid touching the floor for a really long period of time, um, there will be uh, little checkpoint gates that you'll put uh, cross over and it will create a respawn on a safe spot nearby uh, just when you pass through it. Um, I don't think I have many of those set up in this area yet. I still need to kind of do a pass uh, over the room and set those up, but they, it is a, a thing in the game um, which is really useful um, just for making sure um, you don't you know lose a lot of progress. Um, the thing with going up and the thing with going up in, in generally any platform game actually um, and especially with this and the nature of the respawn and how it works is um, what do you do about falling? Because if you're going up um, below you, uh, unless you know you work very hard at creating new platforms and stuff to land on, um, the potential exists to fall quite a long way. I'm just going to climb a bit higher up as well so we can maybe see more of this in action. Um, I don't know what happens for example if you do this at the moment. Yeah, so like <laughs> that can happen. Um, let me turn that off as well. Um, and now my spawn is all the way down here. I've fallen all the way down there. I had to work fairly intentionally to get that to happen. But you can imagine, like, you know, players just know what they're exploring. They want to see what secrets and stuff exist around the corner. A lot of these trials are not hooked up yet as well. So they will just uh, say that's kind of like demo text um, to sort of, you know, for, for trials I hadn't finished yet uh, for the demo. Um, so a lot of them will say that at the moment. 
But yeah, it, it, it's a big question for any game where you're doing a lot of vertical ascending. It's like, what do you do about um, the player falling? Um, and at the moment, my answer has mostly been through level design. So you see, if you fall down here, there's usually there's quite a lot of spikes uh, around the place that aren't really there to pose a challenge. They're there to kind of kill you if you fall um, in a helpful way. <laughs> so if your respawn is here and you fall all the way down here because you screw up this jump, you're going to respawn back up there where you left off. Um, and unless you're very intentional about it like that, um, it's quite hard to actually even, there's even more underneath there. Um, it's quite hard to like fall a long way without meaning to. I think it's okay to fall a long way as long as you uh, intend to do it. Um, but it can be quite lame to, to fall a really long way um, if you don't mean to do it because then it's like you just lose loads and loads of progress. It can be really quite devastating. And um, some games that are a lot about climbing decide to lean very hard into that. You've got games like Jump King, uh, games like uh, Getting Over It by the Bennett Foddy's thing. And um, what those games do is they decide, you know what, the, the nature of this design seems to be very punishing. Maybe that's what the game is about then. And they've made the game just, you know, they've given it a very punishing vibe. Um, they've made it actually quite funny in a lot of ways. So it's just like, it's, you know, it's, it's comedic and so on, which kind of like helps, you know, it, it, it's kind of adversarial. It's like the developer against the player uh, in, in some way. Um, but that's like, that's not the vibe I wanted to go for with this game. Like some areas have a little bit of it. You know, some people do get kind of a bit of a rage platformer vibe from it. That is kind of like what it's called, right? A lot of people refer to that sort of vibe and design as rage platformers, you know, stuff that's just really hard and designed to be frustrating, but like, you know, they kind of get away with it with that being the vibe. And it's like, you know, you, it's very clear that that's the vibe and it's what you signed up for. This game, I don't feel like you, you signed up for that in the same way because a lot of the game is quite quite nice to you in a lot of ways it's quite encouraging it just wants you to try difficult things it doesn't really want to if inflict pain on you um you know so i try and like actually i don't like to do you know, i don't like sections where you can like just accidentally do that for example um i like to think it's like through level design i've made it quite difficult but i'm still not 100 percent happy um with like the mountainside as it exists and the there are places where you can just accidentally fall a really long way and uh, it just it feels really really bad you know like you're, you're working really hard or something you, you you already did the stuff coming up to it you don't you know need to prove yourself again in in that way um and a lot of the game doesn't like force you to do that unless it thinks the the sequence of moves together is particularly interesting or important or it's a fun part of the challenge to to do a certain set piece of movements in one kind of thing like this section you kind of have to do all in one you know like you can fall at any point there and you would have to do that kind of section again you can do that but i generally don't you know i generally have sections like that that are small and contained and don't feel like really really bad to fail in that way so here for example um i actually have a, a kill zone on the bottom of here that will actually just kill you if you touch it um because um i don't know if you've been keeping track as i'm climbing where this actually is and what's below it uh the general vibe i get is that at least for me when i come to here i don't really have in my head like what's below here i know because you know i've been working on the game for too long but like I, I do know what's below here but i think like most people um won't especially given i forget myself sometimes um and so that gives this area kind of the vibe as feeling bottomless because i mean you literally from what you can see it is bottomless right um so i think i got away quite well with just putting a kill zone there it's just like oh yeah you got kind of fell to a bottomless depth um, but if i like use my debug thing and scroll the camera down um, you can actually see it's just that area just above um, where kind of we, we got to this peak there, um, which might make you feel like, you know, you shouldn't, you know, like intuitively that wouldn't kill you. But I'm kind of betting on the player not being super like spatially aware of that. You know, they might assume that this is like overlooking like uh, all the way over here or something um, and so on. And since the camera doesn't move like that, we, you know, it, it, it's just kind of an illusion of like a, a, a bottomless fall. Well, that's the idea I'm going for. The, again, the whole intent of it is I just, you know, I didn't want you to fall down here, land there, and then have to come to this section, do all of this again, just to try this bit again. You know, if you're working on this bit, I want you to be working on this bit. You know, that's, that's fair and fun and whatnot. Um, and it's easy enough if you really want to, to kind of jump or back down there. It's not super difficult to go 
backwards there, which is another thing I have to be mindful of, you know, and that's the thing with, like, again, checkpoint saves and things like that, of, like, you know, working out uh, the back and forth of going through areas. The tricky thing with the, the world design in general, it's one thing I thought when I was first designing this was, like, well, every area needs to be fun to travel through, like, forward and back, because I'm going to have trials everywhere, you're going to want to be able to backtrack, um, and, and that kind of thing. So, like, every area needs to be fun. And that just wasn't sustainable, really. It's just not that fun, um, honestly, to try, like, uh, at, at innate, like, uh, it's not interesting, the level design, to make it so it's always, like, traversable one way or the other. It just limits you too much. So, like, there are, like, big chunky linear sections in the game now, and instead we have things like warp zones and stuff like that. And other ways to kind of move around. Um, and kind of the, the world design hooking, having lots of hooks and like loops and stuff like that helps resolve the issue better than just like, you know, trying to make it so it's okay to go uh, approach everything from every angle, you know, like it doesn't really work as well. Um, it's a problem Castlevania 2 kind of struggled from a bit. I think it was the, the idea that like, you know, uh, as opposed to like the first one where it's like you always knew which way the player was coming from and you could design really nice cool moments. Um, Castlevania 2 kind of had like a, a lot of things where it's like, oh, you don't necessarily know which way they're coming from, so you've got to be able to like go backwards across this thing and forwards across this thing, and it kind of muddied the, the, the world design a lot, in my opinion. Um, so I kind of want to avoid that here. So yeah, this area kind of gets, it gets more and more difficult the, as you get up, but also I kind of, kind of tried to make spikes sparse at the same time, which is interesting, like right? you would think like more spikes, more difficulty. Um, not really always the case. Um, more spikes, more intimidation. Not necessarily more difficulty unless all those spikes are relevant. So there's a less spikes that are sort of more relevant um, and still just lots of really tricky yeah, sections like this um, that are quite hard to do um, regardless of the spikes. Because I just wanted it to feel, you know, as you're getting higher and higher up the mountain, um, it feel less and less like, you know, it more like nature driven, you know, and, and less like man-made the higher you get up. Um, and so it feels more like just a struggle against sort of the elements and, and so on to get like higher and higher up here. And it's, it's really tricky to try and gauge how long this is going to be for a lot of people. Um, obviously it's like, you know, I know that like I am a bad metric because, you know, I'm you know, I, I made the game, um, but some people are, you know, as good as me, it seems like, when they first start playing it. And I sometimes worry, like, oh, this game's just, the linear path's going to pose no challenge to those people whatsoever, especially some of the people who, like, speedrun, like, uh, the demo and stuff like that, and are already really good at, like, the movement. They're just going to finish, like, the basic stuff so quickly. Uh, but maybe I don't need to worry about that, because there's lots of optional. As I say, all the lots of cool hard optional stuff for them. See, that's a difficult thing there as well, is, like, you know, did I want there to be a checkpoint there, because look how far I fell just by dying, just because I haven't touched uh, a surface. That's actually kind of the intent of this area a little bit, um, to get longer and longer, like, grueling challenges as you climb higher and up here. It's part of the difficulty of this section. Quite, as I said, it's quite different to the rest of the game. Um, probably the most unique zone in that sense of just, like, its intent and how it is laid out to actually force, like, a difficult like challenge like this um but as i said i um in my like video on the world building i want to kind of give you a taste um for for difficulty in the game and let you decide how you feel about that it's the only one really well it's not there's lots of difficult stuff but it's the only as i said it's, it's the only section quite like this and anything else like anywhere near this sort of thing you you have to kind of go out of your way uh, to seek out um, so, in a way, in some ways, this is like the true demo <laughs> when you when you get to it of what the game kind of has to offer. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you decide you're not really here for that kind of thing, but you did enjoy the movement of the game, you can just kind of carry on uh, pursuing the, the sort of non-linear, uh, pursuing the linear path. And uh, if you decide you do like it well, then, well, you're in for a treat. Just, you know, start looking around corners. Lots of cool stuff for you. Anyway, can I even do this? I've just died to this section like a hundred times. Um, I did kind of want to get to the end of the mountain to, to sort of finish off the video, but maybe uh, maybe it's better that I don't. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the whole thing anyway. I'm not sure how high I actually got up there. Um, let's like close that. I think it's somewhere, yeah, it's like somewhere this area. Or was it, was it the final bit? I don't, I don't even remember anymore. 
Um, no, no, it was like here, right? I got to here. So yeah, there's a whole section up here that's like um, a little kind of outposty bit up here. Um, there's, uh... oh yeah, I think it was here. The war is gone? Oh, maybe it's just invisible. Either way, there's meant to be like a hot spring here. That's why there's a little floating thing here. There's going to be water here. I don't know what happened to the water object. Uh, it might have been me making changes to it recently. I screwed with that. But yeah, there's going to be a little hot spring there and, and so on. Um, as a nice breather, as I say, like there's a bit left after where I was dying there. But after you've done that huge, long, struggly bit, um, yeah, a nice breather and a warp point to kind of reward you. Um, this will be a path you can take back out of the mountain and then there's just a, a bit more um, awkward, difficult stuff to do to get to the very top of the mountain. Um, and that's the mountainside. Um, yeah, it's a very unique area of the game, very unique issues um, in terms of like, you know, uh, designing around falling, um, you know, like the, the shape of it wanting to do stuff that goes up and like feels out and exposed and when they, also the other thing I didn't really talk too much about is the ability of the player to just jump off to the left you know and like how I feel about that you know like in terms of yeah you jump all the way off here and you fall like miles and land down here um at the moment there's no fall damage or anything like that and it kind of just just sort of hand waves it and shrugs it off does that feel really weird to players um, is it something they might do accidentally? I don't know. It needs a lot more testing. I need to put it in front of a lot more people and see how they just feel about like navigating this mountain and, and, and so on and, and what it's like. Some of these early sections put you in a lot of caves and stuff and like don't really expose you too much to like um, uh, being able to sort of jump left and so on. Because um, you know, I don't want you to get over this thing at the start. Um, there is a little backtracky area as well over here. Um, but yeah, there's, it's generally just one long uh, linear path that gets more and more open because I want it to feel like less like caves and more like climbing a mountain the higher you got up, um, and and designed to be like more of a kind of like a a, a breathy breathy struggle, you know, to to reach the top. You know, I almost give you that feeling of being out of breath because you have to keep doing these long uh, chunky sections with nowhere to set like a respawn point in between, um, and. Yeah, none of the rest of the game is like this. As I say, if I just take a quick look at the valley, um, there's little, like, puzzly bits, like little jumps and moves you have to do now, like, now and again. This section's kind of a tricky linear thing you have to do, but it's just, just the one, and there's lots of, like, checkpointing and stuff along the way, so you don't have to do it all at once, you know? Um, and generally, yeah, there's just little individual moments. This is tricky, but it's designed to sort of gate the, uh, the tower a bit. Um, but the, the linear path straight through it, I mean, you just, just, you can tell just by looking at it, you know, there's not a lot of, like, difficult spikes and stuff, there's this, but then it's just, yeah, and then you just like, just like that, you're like through like a whole, uh, section of the game, doesn't resist you a ton, just going like straight ahead of the story, it's really the mountainside that really, uh, picks that up a notch, um, in here, and as I say, along the way, there are like trials and stuff, but I don't know how many of them I want there to be, because, um, as I said, the other areas like are more chill, and to like to get to these trials, you've got to do harder stuff along the way. Um, so they're generally where they exist; they're quite close by to uh, warp zones and things like that. Um, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting one because it sort of I have to build it in a very different way uh, to the way I've been building the other hub worlds. But I'm fairly happy with it so far. As I say, I need to get some eyes in front of it. I need some uh, need to get it in front of playtesters. And, uh, and really get revised, because this really is just like the first draft, as it were, of an area. Um, so uh, we'll see how it develops as time goes on. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting, and I'll see you all on the next one. Cheers, guys.